Hello, everyone. Sorry about the uh, t brief uh, delay and technical difficulties, but um, welcome to Discover the Power of the MTM Smart Income System. I'm Dan Passarelli. Before we get started, I need to point out options are not for everyone. You should read characteristics and risks of standardized options before trading. Okay, let's make sure you're in the right place here. Okay, who's here to be uh, a more successful investor? Give me a yes if you're here to be a more successful investor. Just go down to where it says questions and tell me yes. Yes, yes, yes. We love nothing but participation here. So uh, this is not like a trick question. This is not, uh, you know, ah, there we go. Some people are giving me in chat. Perfect. Chat is fine too. We'll stick with chat. Okay, awesome. Uh, who's here to learn to outperform your current results? Great. Who is here to, uh, for one of two reasons, this could be either, you're either new to investing and wanna learn the right way right off the bat, or you're already doing pretty well, but you know you can always do better. You fall into one of those two categories? Yes, give me a yes. All right, awesome. And how about for you, winning is the only option and you will literally do everything necessary to be successful as an investor. Give me a yes if that's you. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, that's what I like to hear. You guys are my favorite audience of the day. I mean, to be fair, you're my first audience of the day, but I strongly believe you're gonna be my favorite audience of the day. All right, so uh, let me give you a little bit of background as to who I am and what I'm all about. So this is a little bit of a pictorial representation of, of just some of the companies that I have worked with or work with on a regular basis. Um, and a little bit of a history of what I've done. I was a trader down on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange for many, many years. In uh, about 12 years ago, we started Market Taker Mentoring. And, uh, and in Market Taker Mentoring, we uh, help investors and traders, thank you, Mike, from all over the world. Uh, and what we're gonna be talking about during this presentation, by the way, is geared towards investors as opposed to traders. But uh, anybody who's a trader who has an IRA and also invests, you're gonna freaking love this presentation. So we are invited uh, all over the world to, uh, to give presentations. Here's me and John in uh, Beijing, which we've been invited to about six years in a row now. Uh, I'm glad we're not there right now, but uh, we do like going there. And uh, here's me not too long ago being interviewed on Bloomberg television. Now, uh, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Here's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna to talk to the investing side of your brain, all right? We're gonna talk about, talk about the portion of your wealth that you have either in an IRA or some sort of long-term objective account. And I'm gonna show you some professional strategies to do what you're already doing even better. And at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to take this even further for those of you who are really serious about this. And for those of you, for whom winning truly is the only option and you will do everything you can to be a better investor. All right, so uh, why top investors use options? Like, I mean, first of all, who uses options? Warren Buffett uses options. Mark Cuban uses options. In fact, Warren Buffett famously used options on both Coca-Cola and the S&P 500, specifically selling puts in order to acquire the stock at a lower price. Mark Cuban, if it wasn't for options, Mark Cuban would not be who he is today. Love him or hate him, he would just be some dude because when he had uh, broadcast.com during the internet bubble taken over by Yahoo, right before the internet bubble burst, he collared his position and everyone else who wasn't sophisticated using options perished and he was protected. Jim Rogers uses options. Rick Santelli uses options. Why do people use options though? Like why, why does, does, does the smart money use options? Because you can make money on underperforming stocks or ETFs. 
you can lower your cost basis of investments. A stacker ETF can fall and you can still make money. And it's proven by studies, the strategy we're gonna talk about is proven by studies to outperform the buy and hold strategy. So uh, for those of you who are brand new to options, uh, I'm gonna give you like a 30 second crash course. First of all, two types of options, calls and puts. Basically, if you think the stock is going up, you buy a call. You think the stock is going down, you buy a put. If you're wrong, then you lose money. If you're right, then you make money. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, they all expire at some point. Um, and so when they do, here's the deal. Uh, you might get assigned if those options are in the money meaning if the call is in the money and you own it, you might buy the stock. If the put is in the money and you own it, you might sell the stock. Um, but here's the thing, it's really just not that, quite that straightforward as I put it. There is a time factor involved, right? Those of you who have tried buying options, uh, what happens? You buy a call, the stock kind of slowly goes your way, and you're like, oh look, I'm a genius, I'm right. I thought the stock was going up, the stock went up over the past two weeks, but wait a minute, my call didn't make any money. In fact, I'm losing a little bit of money, why is that? And sooner or later, you do enough of these trades, you use the Google machine and figure out why, and of course, it's the time factor, theta. As time passes, options lose value, all else held constant, and so the stock has to be, has to you have to be right it has to go your way enough to cover this detriment of time decay so i like to say if you can't beat them join uh if buying options has challenges what is a different option well how about selling options so the strategy we're going to talk excuse me talk about involves selling options specifically it's the covered call strategy it's a way to take greater control over your financial future. Whoops. A covered call is when you own a stock and you short a call. So two legs, two components to this trade. This, like I said before to Mike here, <coughs> this is an investor-oriented strategy. Right before this presentation, I was trading uh, some very active trader strategies, but I also have earmarked today to go in and handle my investments, specifically my covered calls and cash secured puts. Uh, this is generally considered a very conservative investor strategy. <clears throat> and here's how this works. Let's say we own a sh 100 shares of, uh, of any stock, doesn't matter, at $70 a share. At the same time, we sell one April 75 call at two bucks. So these are obviously numbers that I'm just kind of making up, but they're very, very realistic numbers. Anybody who's done this before, you look at this and you say, yeah, those numbers sound about right. Why would I do this though? Do I do this on every single stock that I ever even think about buying? No, definitely not. I do this only if I plan on holding these shares for a while, specifically after April expiration, but <clears throat> I've got a target exit price. If the stock goes up to 75, I'd actually be okay selling it, sort of like putting in a limit order. I'll have less volatility risk during the life of the call. If I want a less lower risk, I do this. If I want to lower my cost basis, not my tax cost basis, but my actual basically effective ownership price, this can be a brilliant strategy. So look, here's how this works. I own 100 shares of the stock at 70. I short one of the April 75 calls at two bucks. How does this work? What if I hold the stock until after, whoops, what if I hold the stock until after April expiration and the stock is above $75 a share? Let's see who our smart folks are in the audience. What's my maximum profit if I, if I hold the stock, it rallies up from 70 up through $75 a share What's the most I can make on this position? Who can tell me? <clears throat> I know there's a, there's a lag. You're either typing or you don't know the answer. Uh, if you're typing, type faster. Yes, no? 
Seven bucks, says Roy. That's my man. All right, thanks, Roy. That's right, seven bucks, right? Because the stock, <clears throat> we're talking about a different strategy. Could you sell a put? Yeah. Could you do a time spread? Yeah, you could do a thousand freaking strategies. Listen to this one. Uh, selling a put is part of this entire system. We do this on a stock we already own. I think I said that earlier. If I didn't, I forgot to. So obviously, if we already own the stock, it would be stupid to sell a put. So we're talking about a stock we already own. Got it? Okay. So yeah, we own the stock at 70. It rallies up to 75. We make $5, but we also get to keep that $2 that we sold the call for. Now, okay, what if the stock is below 75? What happens? Well, look, if the stock is below 75, what we actually do is lower our cost basis, right? Because <clears throat> if the stock is below 75, and at expiration, the April 75 call expires, and we still own the stock. We don't have to sell it at 75, but we also get to keep that $2. So basically, the idea here is because we effectively own the stock at 68, we owned it at 70, but we got an extra two bucks. So we effectively own it at 68. That becomes our break even. As long as the stock is below 75, we always outperform owning the stock by $2. In fact, as long as the stock stays between below 77, we did something incredibly smart and we made more money than we otherwise would. Okay? So look, uh, the, there's good news and bad news. If the stock rises up through the strike price, the good news is, congratulations, you made money. But the bad news is, if it rises too far up through the stock price, you would have lost money. So, there's three, I like to call this the three M's to investing, and this goes for trading too. The three M's of investing and trading. Management makes money. Management makes money. If you're taking notes, write that down. So we have three choices. We could wait for assignment. If the stock rises through the st strike price, we, could, we have three choices. Wait for assignment, which means we'd end up selling that stock at the strike price, which may be our objective or it may not. Uh, or if we don't want to sell the stock, we can buy to close the short call. Or we can buy to close a short call and sell a higher strike call that's probably further out in expiration, which is called rolling. Now, this is an example that I put in this presentation a while back, and I keep it in here because it tells a great story. It's my favorite slide in the presentation. So look, imagine, uh, and this, this screenshot is from last year sometime. We were, imagine we were long, doesn't matter what stock it is, but the actual stock we use was Palo Alto. It was at $244.25 after this. Now, the really cool thing about this slide is that since I took that screenshot, Palo Alto has been both below that price and above the price. All right, so keep that in the back of your mind for a moment. So at that time, we'll imagine that our thought was, if it was much lower, I'd love being long this for a long-term buy and hold strategy. Uh, but there's some resistance up at 252 and a half, so I'd sell it in the short term and probably buy it back on a pullback. Realistic forecast, anybody ever had that sort of thesis to investments? The, if you've been doing this for a while, the answer is yes, right? So here's what's awesome about this, right? With Palo Alto at 244.25, we could have sold the 252 and a half calls at $2.04, right? So here's the deal. There was, a, there was 16 days until expiration when, when we could have made this trade. We we'll call it about two weeks, right? And we collected $2.04, which is just a little bit shy of 1% of the stock price. Give me a show of hands. Give me a yes if you would be happy making an extra 1% above and beyond what you're already doing in your IRA or investment account. Give me a show of hands if you'd be happy making an extra 1% above what you already do uh, roughly every two weeks. Would that be okay with you? Would you be happy with that? Jose says yes. Who else we got? Nobody else, if, if your answer is no, you're in the wrong presentation. You should be somewhere else. Okay, user says sure, Mike says sure. Okay, right, so now we've got the, the people who are paying attention here, right. Every, anybody in their right mind would be happy making an extra 1% or so every two weeks or so, right? That's 24% a year. Now, here's the, here's the cattle, here's the thing. 
that's not always going to happen. There's going to be some times when, I mean, if the stock falls, you still make an extra 1%. If the stock rises up through the strike price, you might not make that 1% during that two week period, right? So we might need to do some adjustments. So, you know, are you likely to be able to repeat this every, every two weeks? Not every two weeks, you might have to do some adjustments, but I want your mind to start making, uh, working that way, all right? Because even if half the time this works out, this is a brilliant strategy that can really juice your investment returns. Does this work? Yes. Do I do this? Yes, I do this every single day in my personal IRA. And here is, somebody mentioned selling puts. Selling puts is part of the complete MTM smart income system. Here's when I was in the put selling uh, round of this. I brought in about, uh, you know, add these up, about 1,300 bucks during this two week period. You know, it's a fairly typical two week period. We'd be happy with an extra 13, 14, 1,500 bucks every two weeks. Give me a yes if that's you. But here's the problem with this. This is very, very easy when you have a system, but many people just simply plain do it wrong. They don't have a plan going in. They don't have a methodology. They don't do it on the right stocks and, and it doesn't work. And they say, oh, I heard about this covered call thing. It doesn't work and I'm gonna give up. And they miss the chance, they miss the opportunity to potentially make a lot of money. There's two important metrics in any trading or investing strategy. There's ROI, let's start with ROI. That's your return on investment. And you, you know this, I'm not telling you anything new with this. It's time tested, helps you grow your account faster, manage your risk, lower your risk and lower your cost basis. You start the year with $100,000, you end the year with $130,000, you made 30%, that's your ROI, right? But the other one that people don't think about is your COI your cost of inaction. What's the cost of continuing doing what you're already doing or continuing not doing what you're already not doing? You know, what is that cost? I mean, I think you know that. That's why you're here, right? You want to take your trading and investing to the next level, right? Is that why you're spending your time here on a Friday? Of course it is. David puts on these great webinars. He brings in top experts to show you how to be more efficient, to make more money, and you invest in yourself. You invest in yourself time-wise, and obviously you invest in yourself financially-wise, right? You make trades. You're not afraid to put your money down so that you can make more money in the future, right? So you're not the kind of person who just takes what you're given. You wanna be the person who's in control of your future. Yes, give me a yes if you're the kind of person who likes to be in control of your future. <clears throat> Mike says yes, Jose says yes. User says yes, Dan says yes, okay, good, right. Mulligan says yes, okay, great. So here, this is the crux of the presentation, right? Uh, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty details in, in just a few minutes, but this is what's important. See, see back a long time ago, uh, <clears throat> I, you know, when I was trading on the trading floor, I traded a bunch of these things. Uh, but I was invited by the Chicago Board Options Exchange to come and teach classes uh, for them back in uh, 2005, right? And at first I was like, eh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. You know, I, being a trader down the trading floor is pretty lucrative. Why would I want to do that? You know, there's those who can do and those who can't teach, right? That's kind of how my mind worked. I thought I'd kind of, humor them, I guess, or give it a shot. You know, there was something a little bit interesting to me to, uh, to being a, a teacher. And, and I, I did it. I'm going to give you the short story first and then the slightly longer story. I did it. And like, for the first time ever, like people were coming up to me. I literally had people come up to me on the street saying, Dan, I saw your uh, webinar the other day. It was so helpful to me. You know, I, I wasn't making money before. Now I am. Thank you. And I was like, whoa, hold on a second. Back when I was a market maker, nobody thanked me. In fact, they cursed me, you know, uh, make, you know, you can make good money as a market maker, but you didn't have that fillingness to it, you know? So I found it was my way to give back and I never looked back. Uh, 
this has become my calling and I love helping investors like you to be more successful. But when I first started, one of my first classes was teaching a class on covered calls. Now, look, I've traded some of the most complicated strategies in the world. I've made probably over about 50,000 trades during my career, right? So like, done a lot of this. I had to teach a class on covered calls. And to me, I was like, yeah, it's a pretty basic thing. Everybody knows this. So before we go into class, we're having breakfast. And I'm talking with one of the guys who's an attendee in the class. And he managed $2 billion. No joke, $2 billion with a B dollars. And so he's like, oh, so what's, what's on the syllabus today? What are we going to cover? And I was like, oh, crap, man. This guy manages $2 billion. Like, you know, I had a pretty good trading career, but I, I never managed $2 billion. This guy's going to eat me for lunch. Of course he knows what a covered call is. I'm going to talk about this really basic thing all day. He's going to be bored out of his mind. And I started to feel nervous and insecure, like, oh, no. So, I mean, I, I had the PowerPoint. I was brand new. I mean, I had to stick to the script. I didn't have a choice. So I go through the entire class <clears throat> all day talking about covered calls. At the end of the day, he came up to me and I was like, oh no, he's going to tell me what the WTF. I just wasted eight hours. I was like, oh no. So I was like, oh, hey, uh, how's it going? And he extends his hand and he goes, I just want to thank you for showing me this. I never knew this was possible. I'm going to use this, you know, with our fund, with all our clients or whatever it was. This is so great. I can't believe this. I was like, holy cow, people don't know about this strategy. I mean, I guess it's because I was a professional trader, but, you know, people don't know, don't know about this. Holy cow. And I was like, I got to tell more people about it. So. I started doing it myself. I started really thinking about what makes these tick. And I came up with what I call the covered call proposition. There's, there's two things. Uh, like, what are your two objectives as an investor? One is to make more money, right? The other is to not lose money. So you have two risks. The risk of getting called and leaving money in the table, not making enough money. Or two, the risk of holding the stock, the stock falling and losing money. So... I had to think, how can I come up with a system that deals with both of these things, so, right? So part of that is volatility, using implied volatility as a screen, um, and some other criteria. So I came up with the criteria that would ultimately go into my system that I teach all of our top students. I call them the nail the trade covered call criteria. First, we only do this on stocks or ETFs that are held already in our portfolio that are non-volatile. That's why in this example, whoever that was earlier, we weren't talking about selling a put because this is a stock or ETF that is already in our portfolio, okay? And then later the, the selling puts comes in. So you're, you're actually right on the money. You're, you're just a step ahead of the game. Great job. We only do this in stocks priced above 30 bucks. We only do this when there's overpriced volatility. We'll talk more about that later. We avoid earnings, at least on the first iteration of this. We only we screen for liquid spreads. We manage the strike proximity. We use what I like to call the make sense pack factor, and we make sure that it fits into our overall plan. We don't do this on every stock. Now, there's a guy named Edwards Deming. He has some great quotes. Uh, if you can't describe what you're doing as a process, you don't know what you're doing. <clears throat> the people who try covered calls and lose money, I mean, look, there are a ton of studies, they call them white papers, for those of you who are familiar with the scientific lingo here, they call them white papers. There's a, there's a ton of white papers out there that prove that covered calls outperforms the buy and hold strategy while lowering risk. But for most people, it doesn't work that way. For most people, they lose money in the long run because they, they don't follow a process. Another quote, it's not enough to do your best, you no, must know what to do and then do your best. Like, you know, just hearing, oh, I own a stock and then I sell a call, great. Okay, let's do it with real money. You must know what to do first so that you're able to do your best. And my favorite quote by Edward Deming is, it's not necessary to change, survival is not mandatory. And that goes back to that COI. <laughs> what is the cost of continuing doing what you're already doing? 
you're here to make a change, right? You're here to take that next step. So I'm gonna help you take that next step. Now look, let's talk about something here. Anybody ever eaten at this restaurant? Yes, of course you have. Uh, I, I'll apologize in advance to some of you. Uh, though every once in a while, I must admit, I, I, I like going there, getting a Big Mac. Uh, who here thinks they can make a better hamburger than McDonald's? Anybody think they can make a better hamburger than McDonald's? Give me a, a yes or a no if you think you can make a better burger than McDonald's. Seriously, I play along with me here. <coughs> Mulligan says yes, Jose says yes, okay. How come everybody's saying yes? Well, there's a reason for that. Um, it's, <laughs> it's not really about the quality. What is it about? Well, uh, McDonald's made, and I don't, I don't have my notes, I had to kind of do this a little bit of a different way than I was going to do. I want to say, uh, if I had my notes, the last quarter McDonald's made something like $1.9 billion. Is that absurd? Everybody here says they can make a better burger than McDonald's, but they made $1.2 billion. Why aren't you making $1.2 billion? Well, it's because they made a business out of it, and it's a process. <clears throat> when I was getting started in this business, I was a clerk. I started at the bottom. I was a clerk for about four years, it was very difficult. I started out making $9,000 a year. All my friends were making like 30 or 40,000, probably like $40,000 a year. I was a clerk for four years, I was literally leaving about $30,000 on the table for four years. That's $120,000 that I effectively paid for my education because I knew that learning from a professional trader could help me make so much more money. One of the jobs I had was working at McDonald's. <laughs> I know, it's embarrassing. I hate to tell people that. It was only for like, it was less than a month. I think it was a couple of weeks. It was just awful. Then I went somewhere else that was almost equally terrible job. But I had to support, support my, you know, self to be able to pay my rent because I needed, I needed to have that opportunity to learn from a professional trader. And I was willing to pay for it. I was willing to pay a lot for it, both in time and in money. So, uh, but that experience was a little bit eye-opening. <clears throat> There's no subjectivity. There's not, I don't know, maybe it's a good time to flip the burger. I don't know. Uh, geez, hey, Frank, you think the fries have been down long enough? Uh, mm, well, today I feel like letting them cook longer. Uh, I'm afraid they might, you know, fear and greed, right? Oh, I'm afraid they might cook too long. I better lift them up. Oh, you, you know, like, no. The Frickin' buzzer rings, they come up, boom, everything is perfect. It's systematic, and that's why they're able to print money. Process, system. So this is the system that I'm gonna share with you. And, and, and that's why they can make almost $2 billion a quarter. So this is, this is my system. It's the MTM Smart Income System. There's five steps. The simple trade candidate identification formula, the max profit option screening, option value screening technique, amazingly easy strike and expiration, selection solution, say that 10 times fast, the result-driven trade entry tips and tricks, and time-saving management adjustment and rolling plan. So look, who has felt like this guy before using a system? Who wants to feel like this guy after using a system, right? So this really is about systems. So this is Kat, she was one of our top traders, right? When she came to us, she was brand new and she would be the first to tell you she didn't have a system. You know, she would just kind of trade very, very undisciplined. We worked with her on, on using the system and she, and this is a quote from her. Now I trade in a more disciplined manner. It's all about the process, all about the system. Uh, and it re, she says it really improved her results and that's an understatement. I've seen her statements. She's killing it. So I'm gonna go over each of the five steps. Each of the five steps has sub-steps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over these and introduce step one. I'm gonna go over step one in great detail, the simple trade candidate identification formula. So the four sub-steps to step one are this. <clears throat> Truly identify your objectives on a currently held stock or ETF below 30, or excuse me, above 30 bucks a share. 
Uh, verify that the earnings date is after the front expiration. Verify the offer is no more than 10% greater than the bid. And evaluate that the trade makes sense based on objectives and strike proximity. So look, investors often lie to themselves. <clears throat> the person who talked about selling puts. Selling puts can be great. Right now, I've got some short puts on in selective names right now. And they are hitting my strategic objectives right now. But you know what? That's because I follow a system. How many people out there who have sold puts in the past, you know, had a stock, like, uh, you know, maybe on the spiders, right? Oh yeah, it's at 327, I'll sell the, 325 puts, because if it goes down below 325, I'd be happy to buy it. Wait, it's at 323 and a half. Jesus Christ, this is terrible. I don't want to buy it here. I'm going to lose money, right? How many people have ever been in that situation? It's very, very common. I deal with traders all the time who, who go through that false logic. They lie to themselves, and that leads to unwanted assignment, leading to poor management, thus leading to losses. It doesn't have to be that way. You can't control the market, but you can control your objectives. So there are two objectives. Now we're really getting into the weeds here. It's time to start taking notes. <clears throat> There's two objectives, the skate or trade objective. Write that down, skate or trade, skate or trade. The skate objective is the more common one, although it doesn't have to be. I, in fact, I would say the trade objective for me is probably more common. We'll get to that next. The skate objective is just like I was saying before. You know, the stock is at what, what did I say, 244 and a quarter. I sell the 252 and a half calls at 204. My objective is just to make, you know, roughly 1%, roughly every two weeks, rinse, wash, repeat. Here's an extra 24% in my portfolio at the end of the year. Like that's the skate objective. I don't want to get assigned. I just want to keep the money. Fair enough. And sometimes it is my objective, but sometimes the trade objective is my objective. So, uh, in fact, here, let's go back. We, we can use the same screen for the trade objective. Sometimes my objective is, hey, what if I own the stock at 244 and a quarter? In fact, maybe I bought it a long time ago and I see resistance at 252 and a half and I decide that's a good time to take profits. I can always buy it back on a pullback, right? I'm going to trade out of this stock. I'm going to accept assignment by basically effectively putting in a limit order at 252 and a half. In fact, it's more than 252 and a half. It's 254.54 is where I would effectively sell it. So that's my trade objective. Now here's what I like to call the underused trade objective. <clears throat> uh, there's a guy who lives in my neighborhood. His name is Paul. He's one of the smartest guys I know. He used to be a gigantic trader at Bank of America. He retired. He's about, I want to say 35 or something like that. And, uh, you know, we, I ran into him a few weeks after he retired at one of our kids' baseball games. And I said, hey, Paul, man, what are you doing these days? How's retirement treating you? He said, oh, pretty good. I said, oh, what are you doing? He goes, oh, you know, playing baseball with the kids. I said, oh, cool. You know, what else? He goes, well, you know, managing our family's money. I go, oh, cool. You know, like, what do you do? How do you do that? He goes, well, I use covered calls. I was like, oh, covered calls? Oh, yeah, I love talking about covered calls. Tell me more. What's your method? He goes, well, here's what I do. I take our family's portfolio of stocks, you know, all the stocks we own, and I look for the worst performing ones. And I sell in the money covered calls on them. Covered calls with a strike price below where the stock is. So again, the stock is at, in this case, 244 and a quarter. He might sell something like the 240 calls, giving somebody the right to buy the stock from him that he owns at 244 and a quarter at 240. Does that make sense? Why on earth would he give somebody the right to buy a $244 stock from him $4, $4 below where the stock is trading? Why would he do that? Could that possibly make any sense? Yes. In fact, it's brilliant because he's collecting $8.05. So if he gets assigned and he ends up selling this stock, guess what? He effectively sells the stock for $48.05. He figured out a way to sell a $244.25 stock $4 higher than where it's trading. That's brilliant. These are the things that we can achieve using this system. 
And then there's my secrets. I put secrets in quotes because it's really not a big secret. In fact, I'm gonna tell you the secret right here, right now. But every professional trader I know uses this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share kind of the most common way I do this, but though there are situations that call for this to be done a little bit differently, but here's how this works. Let's say I own the stock 244 and a quarter. Uh, I want to sell it at 252 and a half. And so I sell the 252 and a half calls to 204 and the stock actually goes above 252 and a half. You know, maybe it's up at like 255, right? It's at 255. Well, guess what? I'm leaving money on the table at that point. I have to sell this stock at an effective price of 254.54. But if I didn't do the covered call, I could sell it at 255. Oh no, what do I do? Well, here's what I do. First of all, I don't say, oh no, what do I do? Because I wanted to sell the stock at 250, you know, at this price. Like that was my objective, just like putting in a limit order. If you get filled on a limit order, are you sad? No, you're freaking happy. So I'm happy, but I like money. So I want to make more money. So what I'll do often is I'll buy those calls back, sometimes for a loss. You know, I might have to, I sold them at 204, I might have to buy them back at like four bucks or something, right? So I would be losing $2, seems terrible. Oh, Dan, why would you do that? Here's why. Because then I sell the at the money, which would be the 255 calls, and I'd be able to get about five bucks or something for them. So I lost $2, but I took in another $5, and I still sell my stock at a higher price. So I just made a lot more money and still stayed consistent with my objective to sell the stock. So there's a lot of things you can do when you understand this, but it's not all about just outperforming the market. I mean, yes, obviously that's your main goal, but when people don't follow a system, you know what happens? It chews up all their time, it stresses them out, frustrates them, and it doesn't work. This is Mike, he is, a way smarter investor than me. He uses like a Warren Buffett style in, of stock picking for his investments. He kills it, but he knows that covered calls outperform what he's already good at. But he tried it, he's, he was too busy. He came to me, he's like, yeah, I can't make this work. I said, all right, let's talk about it. So we went through it and systemized it for him. And he said, you know, I used to be overwhelmed with my busy schedule, he'd miss trades or fail to manage properly. But now that he has this system, it's a, it's a breeze for him. In fact, I do this literally in about five minutes a day and so can anyone. So it's about saving time too. So uh, somebody, and I'm so glad whoever that was earlier, I forget who it was, Mike maybe, uh, mentioned traders and investors. It's a big difference. Investors invest for the long term, like a buy and hold strategy is central to that. Traders use different positions. So, and, and every, like, you know, everybody's an investor to some degree. Some people are traders, but because everybody's an investor, that's part of what you do too, I, uh, for, for at least almost everyone. So investors use covered calls, traders use things like debit spreads or something. Uh, we have a daily class called our group coaching class, Market Taker Live Advantage group coaching class. John Kamisic, who I'm sure you've heard of John, famous trader, uh, ex-Goldman Sachs guy, he actually runs that class. He scours the market every day, spends a couple hours doing it, uh, using the methodologies he's learned throughout his career. And he gives you about 10, uh, it depends, but sometimes about 10 trade ideas a day. Some are covered calls for the investor side. Some are things like debit spreads, credit spreads, time spreads. Uh, so, you know, having a, an ex Goldman Sachs guy giving you trade ideas every day is something that a lot of our students look forward to. Some students have been in that class for years and years and years. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. In fact, I'll show you how you can get that free for a month later. Uh, so also, uh, this thing about stocks being over $30. Options are based as a percentage of the underlying. So if you are trading like options on a low price stock, the options are very low price. They're sometimes too cheap to sell. Um, and commissions can make up too large of a percent. Even nowadays when commissions are pretty much zero, you know, it, it can still be a large percent, uh, you know, when you're selling options at three cents or something. And the bid ask spreads can be proportionally wider. Like here's an example. 
like the, like uh, Panera, or not Panera, Palo Alto. You know, we can sell those for $2.04. That's $204 of money. Here in Ford, you know, maybe we could sell the nine and a half calls at 10 cents. You know, that's $10 of money. Is that really worth doing it? Probably not. Sub step two, verify the earnings date. Earnings is the, typically the most volatile time of the quarter. We want to avoid volatility, so we usually want to avoid earnings. So earnings can be after the front expiration, the shortest term expir expiration. Um, so we have to, at least the first iteration of this, only sell calls on stocks that expire before earnings. We'll show you how to select the exact expiration later in the MGM Smart Income System. Sub step three, verify, this is your liquidity screen. A lot of people have all these very complicated ways to screen liquidity. It can be very easy. All you have to do is verify the offers no more than 10% greater than the bid. You don't have to use volume and open interest. When I was a market maker, I had to do that because I was trading, you know, I'd trade 500, 1,000 contracts at a time. I needed to know that there were gonna be people there taking the other side. With the covered call strategy, you're not gonna be trading 500 of these calls, you know? You're, you do it 100 shares versus one call, so you're probably doing five lots or one lots or 10 lots at the most sometimes. So it doesn't matter what the volume or open interest is. You wanna verify that the offer is no more than 10% greater than the bid. And then we also wanna use the make sense factor. This is a simple yes, no test of whether the covered call proposition is logical based on each specific candidate. So like, th this is one small part of the make sense factor. <clears throat> There's nobody in this room who is going to say that this Palo Alto trade doesn't make sense. If you think it doesn't make sense, you have not been paying attention, you're in the wrong class, right? Like this is, you should be very excited about this, right? <clears throat> but there's also nobody in this class, like especially if you looked close, I didn't talk too much about it. Like this Ford call doesn't make sense. You know, like look, the stock is at 27. Um, you know, I mean, it could easily be up above 950 tomorrow. Why, why are you giving up a ton of upside to make $10? Like that just doesn't make sense. You can't really justify it, especially if you have to pay commissions. Um, <clears throat> your objectives play a big role in the make sense factor. Like if you strongly desire assignment, you're okay going close to the money, right? But here's the thing, like there's a balance. If you sell options too close to the money, it means a greater chance of assignment, which you may want, my secret, air quotes, role to trade strategy goes right at the money. Um, and I might want that, but if your objective is to skate, you don't want that. But if you go too far from the money because you want to skate and you want to make sure you don't get assigned, you might be collecting too small of a premium. It's just not justified. So that was a very elaborate uh, description of step one. Step one is what helps you identify the trade candidates. If you can't identify the best trade candidates, Nothing else I can tell you will help. I wanted to make sure you had that down so when you leave here today, you, you at least start with a great fighting chance. These other steps, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go quickly through them uh, so that you understand how those work as well. Because if you can't manage properly, if you can't do the screening and entry and strike and expiration ex uh, solution, you know, it's not gonna work. So we need to screen for value. With the covered call or cash secured put strategy, we're selling options. We only want to sell options that are overpriced, right? Do you want to sell something that's underpriced? You know, if your house is worth $500,000, do you want to sell it to somebody for $200,000? No, you don't want to do that with your options either. So we look for overvalued options and we use volatility charts to do that. Step three, the amazingly easy strike and expiration solution. I, I, I touched on the basics of this. If you were listening about what we talked about before, you, you've got the gist of it, right? As far as strikes go, you don't want to go to, you, you have to balance to your objectives. Do I want to go close to the money or far from the money? If I go too far, it's probably not worth it. If I go too close, I'm certain to get assigned. Is that my objective? As far as expiration, I want to avoid earnings. 
there are a few other things we have to talk about, but if you know that, you're ahead of a lot of people who forget to look for it. Uh, the trade entry. So trade entry is, is, can be very tricky, right? With trade entry, uh, sometimes you have to middle the markets, um, which is sometimes stocks like Apple uh, with the ETF, the spiders, that's simple. Just put the thing in in the middle and you're gonna get filled probably. With some stocks, you know, like I was trading something in uh, XNLX the other day, I think that was a symbol. Uh, it was impossible to middle it. You had to have a proven strategy. So we have the 25-20 middling rule for, for the stocks like that. And then I said, management makes money. So it's essential when you put these trades on to have a plan for management, know exactly what you're going to do, when you're going to adjust, when you're gonna roll, when you're gonna accept a sign. Okay, how, I went through a, a few examples here. How often can you find opportunities like this? Literally, there are hundreds right now. Uh, I showed you an actual screenshot of, of my trade log. If you don't take action on great opportunities, your ROI remains the same, your return on investment doesn't change, you're here to change it, right? And your cost of inaction continues adding up, and that's bad. Are these returns common? Yes, studies prove the data. If you can identify the best candidates, set them up right, manage them, you can do this. What if the trade doesn't work out? Well, that's why I put it into a foolproof, easy to follow system, work the system and the system works. So here's how to make this work. It's a simple system anyone can follow. The timing is ideal with the, the VIX where it is right now. If you can follow a checklist, you can take your first step to beating your current results and the market today. I wanna share this with you. This is the MTM Smart Income System. It is an online, modular-based video class. Here's just some of what you'll learn. Time-saving ways to scan the market so that you can do this in five minutes a day. Where to get the data, how to screen for value using those volatility charts. The seven steps to selecting strikes and expiration, and then a whole bunch of it is about management because management makes money. So you now have an opportunity, all right? Who is this opportunity really for? Well. This is not for people who are looking for a get rich quick scheme. If you're looking to make 300% on one trade, like some of these promises you hear that are outlandish, this is not for you. It's not for gamblers. This is for people, it's not for people who would rather spend time and money enduring losses to learning on their own. If you have five years to learn how to do this, think of how much money you're leaving on the table. It's also not for wishy-washy procrastinators, but trading and investing is not for wishy-washy procrastinators either. If you can't make a decision, you're not gonna make a good trader. This is for people who want more consistency. It is for people who want low risk trades with high profit potential. It is for you if you believe your success is tied to following a methodology. It is for you if you can follow a few simple steps. If you're an action taker, right? If you're ready to make an investment right now. This is the MTM Smart Income System. This is easily priced at a 1997 class, almost $2,000. Why is it priced at $2,000? Because if you can make the returns that we're talking about in this presentation, this is, could, could potentially be the best investment of your life, right? Like how much did you invest on the last stock you bought? $10,000, $20,000, how much has it made you? How much can this system make you every two weeks? So we price this to be a no-brainer price. But I wanna make sure that this works for everyone. And so, oops, I wanna make sure that this works for everyone. So whether you're new to trading or you've been doing this for a while, like Mark here. Mark is one of our most experienced traders. He quit his job and now he trades full-time and he had a great job, now he trades full-time. I showed him this strategy and he, said this is very, very easy to understand and he uses it every day. But some of you are newer to options, so I wanna make sure this works for you too. So I'm gonna give you the Options Impact video series. It's our basic level video class to level the playing field. You can start using this right away. It's a $500 value we're gonna give you. And that class I mentioned before, you're gonna to listen to an ex-Goldman Sachs guy giving you trade ideas every day to help you recoup your investment faster than you could do on your own. Uh, and you're gonna have questions. So we're gonna let you into our MTM 
community chat room for three months. That's a $300 value roughly. Uh, and some of our top students post their trades in that class so you can just follow along. We want to make this easy to turn this small investment into an ongoing profit source for the rest of your life. And many of you will trade these in an IRA, so we're going to give you tips to using covered calls in your IRA. That's a $247 class. So this entire package, it's a value of $3,387, but I want to make this so that I can help you move forward right now and make the price impossible to say no to. So right now, anybody who goes to markettaker.com slash smart, you're gonna get that for being part of this webinar for $497. Right now, one, two, three, go. Go to markettaker.com slash smart. That's markettaker.com slash smart. I just posted that into the chat. You can just click right on it and you are going to get access to this class for just $497. <clears throat> now, uh, there is a money back guarantee. I put my money where my mouth is. I know that some of you, this is your first experience with me, so I want you to feel comfortable. If for any reason, if you go through all these modules in 30 days and, and for any reason, you don't like it, it doesn't work for you, we're gonna give you your money back. So there's absolutely no risk to, for, for signing up for this class. Try it, if you don't like it, you get your money back. If you do like it, you can make this back on just one trade from John's group coaching class. I mean, if all you got out of this was just signing up for John's group coaching class and having one of the top traders in the world from Golden ex Goldman Sachs guy, give you trade ideas every day, could you make $497 in one trade? You tell me. But I wanna prove it to you. There's no risk at all to you, so if you go right now to markettaker.com slash smart, that's markettaker.com slash smart, you'll be able to join us for $497. Right now, one, two, three, go. Uh, do we have any questions before we uh, leave here? Now is the time to sign up. Do we have any questions about this class before we leave? I would be happy to answer them for you. I'd be really happy to answer them for you. Uh, once again, markettaker.com slash smart. That's for people on this webinar. Right now, our normal price is about 2,000 bucks and I'm throwing in all of those bonuses. I'm giving you 75% off the class you know, basically it's about 85% off the entire package price. Those bonuses are designed to make sure that this works for anyone, no matter how much experience they have. If you're brand new, the options impact videos will get you up to speed right now so you can start using the strategy today. Uh, the group coaching class you, you know, enables you to see those trades in action and, and Next Goldman Guy gives you the trade ideas every day. That's invaluable. And then the uh, chat room enables you to get your questions answered. And many of our top traders post their trades in that class real time, which is another source for you just to get trade ideas every day. Some people sign up for alert services. I mean, that component of it is like an alert service on steroids because you can actually ask questions real time about the trade ideas you're given. Um, but, uh, oops. Once again, go to markettaker.com slash smart. And uh, thank you for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad to offer this gigantic discount to our action takers here who are the ones for whom winning truly is the only option.